nestled in the depth of the cosmos, countless worlds scattered across an infinity of galaxies question the uniqueness of our existence on Earth. Some of them show characteristics that are sometimes surprisingly similar to those of our planet. Hidden hundreds of light years away, some are just at the edge of our solar system, planets, moons, asteroids, and many other intriguing bodies. Although some of them have been studied since the 17th century, we would never have imagined that these places have underground liquid water, water ice on the surface, and are composed of the same materials found on Earth. Well, not exactly the same. Let's dive into the chemistry of some of these materials and see how they differ from the ones on Earth. To do so, first, we have to understand the conditions which make these materials the way they are on our planet. These materials are tested around normal Earth conditions, but also at extreme temperatures and pressures, recreating the conditions of some planets and moons. A key characteristic of the Earth is that it is primarily composed of metals and silicate rocks, and it has a solid planetary surface. It is also the only planet we know to have liquid water on its surface. Astronomers have been actively searching for extraterrestrial water. Surprisingly, water seems to be present on many celestial bodies. In recent years, scientists found evidence of its existence in all three states of matter. We are used to seeing water as we know it in its three different states, liquid, solid, and gaseous. This is because on the Earth's surface, there are different environments with a wide range of temperature at a surface pressure of one atmosphere. The average surface temperature is 14 degrees Celsius, which explains why water is mostly present in its liquid form. On other celestial bodies, however, the conditions are often much different than on Earth, which leads to water being present mostly in the solid icy state. Now, how can we determine what type of water ice is present on a planet? Well, the states of matter are driven by two factors, the pressure and the temperature. In the solid state, subforms called polymorphs exist at different pressures and temperatures. For instance, 18 crystalline phases of water ice have been found so far. Now, by comparing the conditions of a planet to the data obtained by material scientists, it is possible to deduce the phase of a material on that planet. To illustrate this, let's take the example of Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons. Jupiter is the fifth planet closest to the Sun and is the largest planet in the solar system. Alongside other satellites of Jupiter, Ganymede changed their perspective on the research of habitability. This very unique satellite is the biggest moon in the solar system, its size being equivalent to the size of Mercury. Ganymede is made of rock and ice. It also has a subsurface liquid ocean hidden behind the thick ice crust. Research even suggests that Ganymede doesn't have one ocean, but multiple, stacked on top of each other, separated by different ice shells. The center is made of a liquid iron core that generates a magnetic field. The temperature on this planet is very cold, on average minus 163 degrees Celsius. Because its axis is tilted, however, Ganymede experiences seasonal changes, just like the Earth. At such low temperature, we expect water to be in its solid form, but what phase? Well, there is a tenuous oxygen atmosphere and the surface pressure is about 0.2 to 1.2 micropascal. At this pressure range, the variation of temperature suggests a possible alternation of two water ice phases, possibly three. When the moon is at its coldest, around 70 Kelvin, the water ice would predominantly be present in the ice 11 phase. When at its warmest, around 150 Kelvin, the water ice could predominantly be present in the hexagonal phase, the same ice phase mostly present on Earth. It is possible that the water ice could be found in the cubic ice phase, as it is present on the phase diagram approximately between 75 and 160 Kelvin. Ganymede's large size and high abundance of water relative to the dense mantle materials create a very high pressures at the subsurface water and rock interface. The pressure at this depth is around 1.2 gigapascal and the temperature nearly reaches 280 Kelvin, causing the water ice to be in the high pressure phase ice 6. 
Now going over to Saturn and its moon Titan. Titan is the second largest moon, its size also being around the equivalent of Mercury. It is the only body in the solar system, alongside Venus and the Earth, to have both a solid ground and a substantial atmosphere, mostly made of nitrogen. Interesting features are hidden behind this thick gaze. The first photos taken by the Cassini spacecraft discovered oceans, volcanoes, rivers, dunes, and an overall landscape that looked similar to the Earth. For example, there is liquid on the surface of Titan, but it is not water, it is methane. Because of the temperature being on average negative 180 degrees Celsius, everything is shifted along a scale of volatility. Water is frozen and solid, and methane behaves like water does on Earth. Titan's center is composed of a silica core surrounded by two water ice layers. Scientists suggest that there may be an underground ocean of liquid water separating the two ice layers. Like Ganymede, this moon also experiences seasons due to the tilted orbit. Given the temperature average of 94 Kelvin with no substantial variations and a surface pressure of around 146 kPa, the water ice composing the outer shell is likely to be present in the cubic ice phase or in a transition between cubic ice phase and the hexagonal ice phase. The internal water ice layer has been so far too difficult to assess. However, scientists believe it is composed of multiple phases, ice 6, 5, and 3, which are all high pressure phases of water ice. Our solar system contains four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. A key component of a terrestrial planet is that it needs to be made of metals and silicate rocks and have a solid surface. However, our solar system is not the only star system in our galaxy. The Milky Way is packed with other stars. Many of these other stars have exoplanets orbiting them. Figuring out the composition of the exoplanets is often much more difficult. Nonetheless, by figuring out the composition and internal structure of the terrestrial planets in our solar system, valuable information can arise for the terrestrial exoplanets. Most research like this is done on Earth. Earth is divided in three main layers, known as the crust, the mantle, and the core, each with its own sublayers. Once you go deeper into the Earth, the temperature and pressure rises, giving you different metals and silicate rocks. By applying this information to exoplanets, one can figure out the different material present there. Now, we will take a look at multiple exoplanets. TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra-cool red dwarf star that is located 40 light years away from us. As TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra-cool red dwarf, it shines far less bright than our sun and only has a surface temperature of 2500 Kelvin, whereas the sun has a surface temperature of 5700 Kelvin. However, what makes this star very interesting is that it harbors seven terrestrial planets around it, which is the most amount of terrestrial exoplanets orbiting the same star currently found. All these exoplanets orbit its parent star very close. When comparing it to our own solar system, all the orbits of the seven TRAPPIST-1 planets are smaller than that of Mercury's. To determine the interior composition of these TRAPPIST-1 planets, their pressure and temperature needs to be known at various radii. The formulas found for the different TRAPPIST-1 planets can be used to find the pressure at various radii. Furthermore, for the temperature, it is assumed it follows a similar gradient as the temperature here on Earth once you go to various depths. By using phase diagrams, multiple structures of metals and silicate rocks can be determined for different depths. In addition, for the TRAPPIST-1 system, a small analysis was done for the atmospheres on the planets. TRAPPIST-1 is now a late type M dwarf star. This means that due to high stellar activity, the early atmosphere suffered considerable volatile loss. For instance, hydrogen loss. As a result, a hydrogen-dominated atmosphere is likely not the case. Rather, a carbon dioxide, dioxygen, methane, or water-dominated atmosphere is more likely. However, it is likely that the planets formed further away from the parent star 
and have migrated inwards. This means that the original composition of the atmospheres did contain some hydrogen. In the last few decades, many of the new transmitting exoplanets were discovered by space-based missions. They discovered a new class of small exoplanets that are astonishingly common in our galaxy. If we would compare them with planets in our solar system, they would fall in between the Earth and Neptune. By investigating these exoplanets, there is a potential in finding new material and liquid water that could be of high importance for us as a species. Nevertheless, the parameters such as the radius and the mass of these exoplanets are still very vague. The highest precision for mass and radius measurements obtained was approximately 30%, which is already very low. In order to cope with these imprecisions, many mass radius models were created. These models investigate the relations between the mass and the radius and try to determine the composition of the discovered exoplanets. By these models, the exoplanets with the highest precision measurements can be classified as either rocky or gaseous. Moreover, these models can specify the ratio between the iron and magnesium silicates found in the interior of the planet. The exoplanets that follow the same line as the Earth corresponds to approximately 17% iron and 83% magnesium silicate. These kinds of graphs can make nice concluding remarks about the exoplanet's interior just based on the mass and radius relations. This one helps in determining the pressure value at every depth of the planet. By combining the knowledge about the pressure with the temperature values, the exact type of magnesium silicate can be specified. From the planets investigated, it can be concluded that most of them would have a melting occurring sooner than on Earth because of higher temperatures. However, it is highly probable that these exoplanets would have additional layers of melting and solidification because of the bigger size. This is highly interesting since in these new layers there lies the possibility of finding completely new materials that were never discovered before.